Hello folks and welcome to another Richard Head Longbows video. This is actually part two of a series of videos. I'll put part one up there on the screen if you've missed it, where we're actually making some children's bows. In the first video I showed you the cutting out, the tapering and how to actually make the stave and obviously planed it up as well. And in this second part we are now doing the roughing out and the tillering and hopefully getting on the knocks uh, so that they can be glued up and that I can finish working on the rest of the bow tomorrow once those have dried. So well, yeah let's get going. These are the two staves. I've already got one in the clamp here so I'm going to start by roughing this one out. This is still a square section at the moment because it's obviously in the last video we did the uh, planing and cutting out. So I need this to get this down to the D section so I'm going to use uh, a spoke shave here and get some of these corners off. <laughs> That's one side done, let's turn it round in the vise now. Okay, that's one end done. Uh, okay, you can see that one's square and that one's now rounded off. Let's turn this one round and do the other end. Okay, that's done with, that with the uh, spoke shade there. Hopefully, if that's coming out on the screen okay, you can see that we've uh, rounded that off there. So, we obviously got to do the back as well. The back is still quite sharp. So, we'll round that off. It's actually hickory on there. Okay, so let's do that. <laughs> Okay, so we've roughed that out. Now we've got the uh, lemon wood there forming that uh, the front part of the D section and the flat section, the back of the Ds, the back of the bow there is the hickory, which we've rounded off those corners there. So the next thing really I need to do now is start the tillering. So I'm going to put some tillering grooves in. They're going to have to be quite small because the ends of these bows are very, very thin and tiny. And uh, yeah, then we're going to get up on the tiller and see what happens. Right, we've got the first of the children's bows up onto the tiller. Uh, well, let's have a look. Well, we can see straight away that top limb's bending a lot more than the bottom. <laughs> I think this is one of those ones where even though it's uninitiated of you can see that immediately. Okay, so we're obviously going to have to take some out of that bottom limb and even that up. So I'll do that now, get it back up on the tiller and we'll see what happens. Okay, I've taken some out of that bottom limb. I've put it back up on the tiller. Let's pull it and see whether that's done anything. Okay. 
okay it's not enough yet as you can see we've got quite a large bend here in the tip of this top limb so I'm actually probably going to take some out of here perhaps even that up a bit but uh, mainly out of this bottom limb okay more work to do see you in a minute okay we're back on let's see if this has made any difference Okay, that bottom, is, bottom limb is starting to bend a bit more, but we've still got that acute bend in the top limb. So around here. So that bottom limb is starting to do some bending now. So I've still got a bit more to take out of there, that uh, bottom limb I feel. And probably a little bit out of here to uh, even up, stop this bend happening here quite so much. Okay, let's do that and I'll put it back up on the tiller and I'll see you in a minute. Right, we're back on the tiller. I have taken some more out of that bottom limb and a bit out of this section here to try and balance out where it's bending most here. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, I don't know if you can see now, that top limb is bending quite nice and evenly now. We've lost that acute bend that was here. But it is still bending quite a lot more and you can see the travel here. See the travel of the uh, hook there? It's going over to one side quite a lot. So we're still stiff in that bottom limb. And I think actually we're fairly stiff here in the sort of handle section and actually still a little bit in the handle section on this top one so I'm going to take a bit out of there and a little bit out of the tip here see if we can't even that up a bit right here we are again uh, it's still unbraced uh, we're back on the tiller again let's see if that work I've just done has made any difference Okay, that's looking a lot better. We're getting a much better even bend throughout there. I think what I'll do is actually brace that up and uh, see how it looks. Right, that's the bow braced up and back on the tiller. So let's give it a few draws and see how it looks now. Okay, that's looking a bit more even now. I think what we'll do now is get the knocks on. So let's have a look at putting those antique knocks on. You're probably wondering how you brace such a small bow as this. Uh, I suppose you could do the push-pull method uh, down by your feet, uh, but as I have a bad back, I have to do it standing up. Uh, so I've been using my inner thigh. Um, I don't recommend it if you're thinking of having a family. Okay, here's our knocks. Oh, lovely little Victorian kiddies knocks. Aren't they sweet? There's the tiny top knock there. And a slightly more functional bottom knock. Okay, let's have a go at fitting those.
Now I've no idea what type of cone shape they've used in these uh, knocks, not having had anything to do with the manufacture of them. So let's see. Okay, so that's wobbling at the top there, so that's touching on this side here. So let's take a bit more off these sides. Let's try that again. Okay, that's not moving so much, but still a bit touching on the sides. Let's take a bit, bit, bit more off the sides here. Okay, that's a lot better now. That's not moving hardly at all, actually. That's not looking too bad. Try the old trick of turning it, see what marks it leaves. I can just see a few marks there. Let's see if we can get rid of those. The marks usually indicate where it's touching. So if you can get rid of those, you'll hopefully get the fit that much better. Okay, still a little bit to come off the sides, I feel. Let's try that. Okay. There we are. That's pretty much perfect on there now. Well, all I've got to do is the bottom one and glue those on. And we will be ready to carry on working tomorrow. So I'm going to end this little bit now. You can join me in a second and you can see what happens tomorrow. OK, it's the next day and these knocks have all dried now. So the, uh, the two-part epoxy that we used to glue them on has dried. So I'm going to use the file now and the rasp. I'm going to take this down a little bit to meet the knock and obviously get rid of some of this glue line. <laughs> Okay, I've tidied that up there so the bow actually tapers nicely into that knock now. You can see with the size of my finger what we're talking about here. Very, very small the dimensions of this and a very small opening on the knock here. And I've tidied the knock up a bit uh, with the uh, with the scraper, got some of the tool marks out and got rid of, the, say, that glue line around there. Once this is polished up, I can uh, you'll see that the colours will come out nicely on here. It'll go nice and nice and black with a few specks of brown in there it's, uh, it's quite nice if you're wondering what I've done there I've just spat on my finger and wiped it on there uh, it gives you a good idea of how that'll look once it's polished up you can see there the unpolished side compared to the polished or spit spit side I should say really anyway there we go that's what I'm going to do as far as the knocks are concerned the next stage is to do the sanding on the bow here I shan't bore you with that I'm sure you know what someone with a piece of sandpaper looks like once I've done that I can then get a layer of varnish on so that's what I'm going to be doing next okay there's the bow all varnished up now 
And you can just about make out the difference on the camera there if I show you the handle section there. That's where there's no varnish, you can just see that there. Okay, so now it's time to do the handle, so we're going to put on the braid and the leather trim top and bottom. Let's have a look at doing that now. These are the bits and pieces that I'm going to use for the handle. So here we've got the gold leaf, the leather, leather trim gold leaf, so that's going to go top and bottom. We're going to need to mark that first. Once I've marked that, I can then get some of this handle braid on, which is a woolen, woolen handle braid, and that'll be wrapped around, obviously. So let's mark up where we need to put these leather pieces, top and bottom. And obviously we've left our mark just showing, you can see that there on the camera, just showing where the pencil mark is of the top and bottom here of this handle section. So let's put the leather trim to that point wrap that round and that will give us our top section there so I can mark that as being where the braid needs to go quite fiddly doing them this size but it's all the same processes Let's wrap that back around, I haven't quite finished marking that a little bit more around there, and a little bit there. Okay, so that should give us a pencil line all the way around there. There we go. So I'll mark this bottom one as well, and then we can start putting on the braid, because the uh, leather trim is going to sit pretty much on the top of the braid. It's actually going to sit just on that um, top edge of the braid there, so that's why I'm marking the uh, the leather first because that's going to go on last. Okay let's get that to fit it on. Let's apply the braid. Now we're going to do a dry run first so we can see how much we need. I've cut it at an angle here so you don't get too much of a bunch up when we wrap it round because it's going to need to wrap over itself to allow us to uh, pull it taut. So I've gone to the line there that we made with the leather leather trim and then we're going to follow around just overlapping slightly I'm not doing it very tight at the moment because this is just a dry run really to see how much I'm going to need okay so we're coming to the end of the line which is there wrap it around a little bit for the amount that we're going to need to tuck in and then going to cut this at an opposite angle as I have done with the top. So I'll get the scissors and I'll cut that off. There we are. I've probably left myself too much there, but I can trim that when I actually do the handle for real. Now let's cover this handle in glue, ready for putting on that braid. You can use any household glue, Yoohoo or Bostic. Uh, I happen to be using the HMG, which is actually the ones that we sell for putting on the feathers that we put on the arrows. Uh, it's actually a sort of contact type adhesive, uh, but you can use it for this sort of job, no problem. We've been using it, using it for years. It soaks in quite well to the back of the um, the braid there which I say is a woolen woolen type braid you may may find other types not don't work so well with the, these types of household glue so you've got to be careful it may be best to try it first but certainly with these natural these sort of woolen type braids it works fine and also we use this for the leather handles as well uh, we did do a specific video on this type of uh, these types of handles that we do, uh, showing you more in more detail. If you want to have a look at that, I'll put that up on the, uh, the screen over there somewhere, so you can have a look at that. Now I'm going to leave that to set just a little bit before I apply this on. So I'll come back in a second and we'll put this on. Okay, that glue has dried off enough now. So let's get this um, handle on here. Again, starting on our line where the leather's going to sit and allow it to just overlap this top section of the braid, this sort of thinner thinner section there. So we're going to allow it to uh, overlap that. Uh, this is obviously quite difficult 
process to do and you need to get it taut enough when pulling that you don't get too much of a lump when you do this overlap. Uh, now I've stuck that down there, that's the beginning section and what I'm going to do because I'm going to be overlapping onto here is actually put a little bit of glue where I'm going to be overlapping which will hopefully keep that in place. Again, following that line, so our top section needs to be quite straight because we've got to allow for where that leather's going to go. So we've gone on to our overlap. I'm trying to keep that taut as much as I can. Then we can drag the angle down. And I should now be able to pull a bit more tight as you may or may not be able to see here. So again, I'm following just where that thinner part goes. So I'm overlapping the two thin parts of the woolen braid there, allowing that thicker part to remain proud, the central part of that pattern of the braid. And I'm approaching the uh, bottom here, the other line. I've got to make sure I get the correct line. So again, I want to just overlap that line we've left for the braid and as I suspected I may have too much here so I can probably afford to cut a little bit of excess off here. Okay, Cut a little bit of an angle if I can. Okay, now I need to lift up where I've left the end off here because I need to tuck that end under. So I need to lift up, pull that braid round and try and get this tucked in and under. Now similarly, like we did with the top, I'm going to want to get some extra glue in there if I can on the under section of this. So again, this is where the uh, HMG comes in handy because it has got quite a narrow nozzle which you can hopefully get in underneath where that's going to sit and a bit on top where that's going to tuck in hopefully and we can try and get that in tucked in under there now you can work this round from the back work it round and that will cut that slack off then you can open up again underneath and again tuck the remainder of that in and you can keep repeating that process until you can get as tight as you possibly can so pushing round creating more slack and push that underneath hopefully tucking all of that in. Now try and make this as even as possible because not forgetting our leather has got to go on the top here covering that top section and bottom section. So that's the uh, braid on there and say so the leather then will go around here top and bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the glue onto the uh, leather because again I'll use the contact adhesive more traditionally in this sense I'm actually going to put some on the back here some onto the bow let it go tacky then apply this on so I'll come back in a minute and hopefully it'll be dry and we can get that started that should be enough time for it to dry now as you can see I've got some glue on the back there and obviously some glue on here now I'm going to go from the top here which is the belly of the bow and wrapping it around towards the back so I'm just catching that top of the braid and I'm going to go right to the back here and at the moment it's uh, only glued as far as there so I want this to uh, set a little bit before I do the rest of it 
that's glued round to there. Now let's do the other one down here. Again, starting on the belly. Pulling it quite tight. Sides and approaching the back of the bow there. So we're left with these two tabs here. So we'll allow that to dry a bit more. And then we will fold over and cut these and butt them up. Those have had time to dry a bit more now, and uh, they're looking a bit more like it. What I've actually done is trim down some of the excess on here. So what I need to do now to get them to actually butt up correctly is push them towards each other and get those two pieces of leather lined up as best I can and you can see that so I then need to cut cut that where that overlap is as best I can and as centrally as possible with these two matching up it's actually quite difficult and they should technically now butt up which they do so again all I need to do is glue allow those to to set and hopefully those will glue down so let's put a bit of glue on there to allow that to dry while I'm cutting these other two here so I can do those others at the same time let's see if that's dried enough now I've given that quite a few minutes Start with this top one, which is the first one I put the glue on. See if they still butt up, hmm, which they do, which is nice. Obviously, you're going to get some excess glue coming out, so you may want to wipe that away before it dries, which I can there. There we go. A bit more coming out. Yeah, there we are. So that's that top one done. Let's just do the same with this bottom one. Let's turn the bow around, it's going to be a bit easier for me. There we go, so you've got that top one to do. Okay. Again, same process. Pushing that round quite hard, getting the butt up evenly. Excess glue, and at this point, it is worth checking that it is all stuck down everywhere, including the handle. We haven't got anywhere that's uh, unglued. You may find as the glue continues to set, you need to re-put things into place because it will try and move itself back round because you obviously put it into a position it doesn't really want to be in. But there you go, that's the handle section. Well there you go, there's our tiny little bow finished with our tiny little limbs, our tiny little handle and even tinier little knocks, the Victorian knocks, which I did mention to you, I was going to give you some more information about. That's in the description box below. And thanks to Chris for some of the amazing research that he did. I'll put a few, some of the dates and bits and pieces of information in there that he dug up. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this little look at making little bows. And I hope it's inspired some little people out there, perhaps with the help of some big people, to make their own bow. There's nothing more satisfying uh, than getting people into the sport of archery, or indeed any sport, at a young age. And hopefully helping their minds and bodies uh, to uh, yeah to improve so if you'd like to subscribe then the uh, things up there that you can hit and if you want to watch the other part the first part of this I'll put that up here and some other videos and bits and pieces so yeah give us a thumbs up a like and a share and all that other stuff that you're supposed to do on YouTube and thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon